Okay. All right. Today I want to share with you about when the gang got busted with blessing. Um, the powerful message of caring, as we've been looking at caring, commitment, and making our place, our, our world a better place to be. Last week's message is uh, dealing with angels and the powers of darkness that are out there. Um, but yesterday we went to see this, this tree, $6,500, and by noon yesterday there was a bid for $2,000 already. People have donated hundreds of trees and uh, caring enough to get involved. And then the money that is raised um, will go to help the hospital. Caring enough to do something. Last week we looked at the angels among us in action. And we can watch, you can watch actually the message from last week I put uploaded on Rev, Rev Greg AM. Uh, that's my uh, Facebook or my uh, YouTube channel. Rev Greg AM, the message is on there. So if, if that message touched your heart, let people know about it, forward the, the, uh, the, the site, and, and people can watch that message. I just put it up there this morning, so it's on YouTube. There's a couple other ones, one about going to Mexico, another one about the, the least, the little, the, the kind of tiniest, and what God uses and blesses. Powerful truth that, the truth that we're looking at today, if we are open, is that we have to get out of the comfort zone. We love the comfort zone, but um, we listen to the message of the book of Acts in Action. The book of Acts in the church today. The church is still in mission. If you look under your bulletin, it says Acts, the church in mission, and I've inserted in there still in mission. It hasn't stopped. Acts in action. Acts in action today. Um, what we shared last Sunday was dealing with the, the, the angel that came and spoke to, um, to Philip and said, go down south on the trail, the path down south. And then the spirit spoke to him and said, go near that, that Ethiopian in, the, in his chariot. And then he reached out. And so we see the spirit from him. First of all, the angels are, will speak. And I believe that you're going to see the powers of God. And it's happening all over the world where angels are, are showing up. Uh, not even knowing that they're angels, but people are just giving ideas, telling people things to do. And if we're open, if we're listening, if we get out of the comfort zone, we're going to see some amazing things happen. We follow the, then the Spirit's prompting. He said, well, go down that way. He got there. He said, now the Spirit, which he lives within us as we become a believer, his Spirit lives within us. And his prompting is, go near to the chariot. When he listened to the man in the chariot reading from the book of Isaiah, I believe it was Isaiah, he said, uh, he risked being made a fool. I said, so do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I understand? He said, uh, and the man said, could you come up and interpret it to me? And so we need to, first of all, listen to whenever that call comes, and then follow obedience to get closer to the situation, and then be willing to risk to step out of the comfort zone. And that may mean speaking out. That may mean baking something for someone and offering, giving it to them. That may be offering help. May be taking time for prayer. That may mean, and I just encourage you, come out on a Tuesday night prayer night. All over the world, God is raising up churches to get, have nights of prayer. And we're just wanting to be part of that. Also, it may mean helping others to have a Christmas. And that's what we're going to do next Sunday. We're stepping out of what we're going to get about for what we can do. And what Al just shared this morning, it means about Mexico. And about giving and caring and being there. And I talked about the smiling, shining faces at the, in the one Carol was saying. I thought, when they see Operation Amigo showing up there, their faces are shining too. <laughs> they are shining because when we started to go down there, they were, they were making like $5 a day if they had a job. And stuff costs almost the same as here. So, I mean, what can they do for themselves? You know, how can they, uh, how can they do, you know, really do hard anything? But when we came, when Operation Amigo came, and that, now there's literally thousands of people, in the thousands probably, that have gone down there and taken time to minister down in Mexico. When they, uh, when you go down there, they're smiling faces because they just know that help has come. Have you ever uh, been in a desperate situation and when someone showed up to help you, you smiled because help had come. And then when they see the help has come. And so we see it's in, in, uh, in hosting Makeaway. Next Sunday is us in, in stepping out of our comfort zone and saying, okay, we're going to do this for these children. The Festival of Trees is giving for the equipment in the hospital. 
It's sad, and I jotted this down when I was preparing, it said it's sad because tens of millions of dollars have been given out paying, uh, paying for board members and letting them go without, uh, pay, without, uh, with a payoff, and then only to hire new board members. This has just been a cycle that's been going on for the last 15 years. And, uh, but people are giving to help the hospital. Just think of these payoff things that happen. Um, you know, when you go, the board expands, it contracts, it expands, it contracts, and, and the paying off. And, but just think of what can be done. But the people are going to be stopped. And I looked up online, and they have it in one hall there. Thankfully, people still give. And the 21st uh, Annual Festival of Trees last year raised $1.75 million. $1.75 million to help the Red Deer Hospital. I mean, that's people giving. All those things that have been donated, so that, yes, they put the, the price on what that tree would cost. Uh, the value of it was $6,500, and trusting that people would bid it up. And people are giving silent auction, many things there. I felt poor when I walked around there and looked at the bids. I didn't even try it. <laughs> uh, and, but, you know, people are gathering around and bidding. And so 1.7 million. We went there because, uh, well, never, actually had never been there before. It's beautiful. Uh, but our granddaughter was singing. So we got to go there and listen to her choir from Steffi Wine. And school after school, choirs, musical people coming in there, donating their time to bless everybody. But this is the spirit of Christ, the spirit of giving. We'll see the hands of the Lord uh, in action. And, and I've said that all the way through this year. The hands of the Lord will be seen in 2015. But you might see them as yours. It might be your hands, and, it probably, and it, I'm sure in this past year, your hands have been the hands of the Lord in action. Because hands don't come out of the sky and do things. You know, hands aren't going to feed the children next, next Sunday out of from God. They're going to be our hands extended. Oh, to be his hands extended, reaching out to the oppressed. Let me first touch him, and that, uh, then that others may know and be blessed. But I want us to continue on and talk about a fellow in our, in our study, we're going through the book of Acts, a fellow that you, you don't want to bring to dinner. Hands down, you don't want to bring this guy to dinner. In Acts chapter 9, in Saul's conversion, it says in verse 1, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Well, you didn't, even, didn't want to bring him to dinner. You didn't even want him to know that you were a believer. Because what was he doing? He was, he was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Not a nice guy. He went to the high priest in verse 2. Religious rules, rulers, they killed Jesus. Now what? These, uh, they're frustrated. These pesky believers, they just don't quit sharing. We warned Peter and John. We told them, don't say any more. And they just said, well, we can't listen to you. We, not, we have to share what's in our hearts. We're going out and sharing. And they warned Peter and John. They warned all the disciples, don't do it. And they, they were just really frustrated. These pesky believers just don't quit sharing. They, they, and I wish they had quit healing people. Oh, like this guy, I mean, he was, he was there. We, we, we've known him, we laying there for 40 years. So it was all fine. We just ignored him when we went into the temple, beautiful, the gate, beautiful. But, you know, there he was, and he wasn't bothering anybody. He just goes, to handle what's money? And what do they do? They come along on the Sabbath and say, we don't have money. Get up and walk. And he gets up and walks. And not only did he walk, I mean, he had the nerve to leap and jump and praise God. They're going, what are we going to do with this? Religious people are like that. They're always like that. They want to kill, put down everything. They beat them up, they said they threw they didn't quit. They imprisoned them, they didn't quit. They threatened them, they said they didn't quit. Angels gave direction, especially when they were going to get out of jail. Midnight, uh, the angel came and the jail opened and he loosed their, their chains. I mean, talk about angels. They have saw it then. I believe, as I was sharing, if you watch it online, you'll see it, that we're going to see more and more and more of the angels of God. Remember, there's one-third of the, the angels left to be with Lucifer, but two-thirds are on our side. We're on the winning side. I don't know if Edmonds will have that, that, uh, that uh, assistance today or not, but, uh, but we do. We do. You know, because next year there'll be another great cup game. Age. Well, hopefully it works out good today. Uh, but, you know, you might be cheering for the East. That's okay, too. It's just a game. You know, it's just a game. But what we're looking at isn't just a game. It's life. It's, it's, it's hope. It's healing. They threatened them in prison. The angels, the angels came and gave them direction. The Holy Spirit within them was there and inspired them to act. And then they risked and acted out. 
So what's Paul doing? He goes out getting for permis permission to persecute. He went to the, the, the high priest and said, can I go out and get these guys? It's a sad thing today, and it's a real commentary, that you can get more acceptance to pull down and to destroy things. Christmas is an example. Pull down and destroy things and you can't to lift them up and build them up. It's e always easier to get permission to destroy. To, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, I just wanted a nativity scene. Well, not in our town. You know, I just wanted to say Merry Christmas. No, Happy Holiday. Hello. You know, like, it's easier. It's, it's just like, if you want to go out and do it, well, fortunately, you can go ahead and do it anyways. They can't stop you. They might take you to court, but they're going to look kind of silly. Go ahead and wish people a Merry Christmas. The blessed Christmas. Go ahead and, and talk about the Christ of Christmas. And, um, you know, as Christians, uh, we... we, we we don't have to back off. We can be rejoicing in it. And the world is rejoicing in it as well. And so it said, and he went to them and he asked for letters to the synagogues in Damascus. So that he could, that, that if he found any there who belonged to the way, that was what they called Christians, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. This guy is not the one you want to bring home for dinner. <laughs> He's out. This is Saul. He wants to take them, capture them as prisoners, and bring them home. Uh, bring them to prison. It was open season on believers. And remember what happened at Stephen, the first, one of the first seven of the deacons, uh, when, they, when they took him out of the city and they stoned him and they killed him. And Saul stood there and held their garments. I think that's kind of equivalent to driving the getaway car. Isn't it? <laughs> you know, the guy that drives the getaway car is still involved in the bank robbery. You know, and the guy that's standing there holding their garments so that they didn't get soiled while they're killing Stephen. Um, you know, like, like, and Saul probably had a reason because he had this, if he had thrown rocks and they got blood on them, and he wouldn't be able to go to the temple and, and put on a show. You know, it's like the Samaritan on the side of the road, the priest and the high priest and the, the Levite came along. They wouldn't go and touch him because then they couldn't go to church and they were on their way to church. Because once they touched blood, they couldn't go near him. For, for seven days, I believe it is. So here it is. They stoned Stephen. Now God. Um, here, do you see the situation? Saul is out asking for permission to go into Damascus and to drag them out of their Christians and to put them in prison in, in Jerusalem. I don't know about you, but now God, isn't it time you took him out? You think that way? I would. Isn't it time you take him out? Now God, you want my help to take him out. I can help you. Now, God, this isn't fair. When does the everlasting life kick in? Come to Jesus and say, it'll be fun. When does the fun part start? You know, here they are coming to the Lord and they're, they're risking in fear of losing their lives. God wants you to have everything you want. You can write your own ticket with God. When do I start getting what I want? You see, what's leaked into the church is a me-centered gospel. Not a Christ-centered gospel. Not a caring about others. He said, love the Lord your God. He said, what are all the commandments? He said, these are the greatest. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, the second thing he said is to love others. To care for others. To help with a make way lunch. That's what he's talking about. And as he neared Damascus in verse 4, it said, on his journey, now we're saying, God, this would be a good point. This is a good spot. God, suddenly, the light from heaven flashed around him. God wasn't a very good shot. <laughs> like, like, you think that God could have got him with the first light. You know, but look, what kind of, you know, it's kind of like Peter. Peter going to defend Jesus, and he, all he got was the high priest's servant's ear. Like he was, I think he was heading to the center, but he, did, he only got his high. And then Jesus went and said, Peter, put your sword away, and picked his ear up and put it back on. Said, so if you're going to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Well, here, God's got a chance, and it says, verse 4, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Well, at least God's addressing the troublemaker. But you know, when you look at that in the Old Testament, remember when they were bringing back the Ark of the Covenant, and it was on an oxen cart, it was supposed to be carried by men, consecrated men, it was on an oxen cart, and it started to wobble, and the guy reached out to hold it from falling, and boom, he was dead. Wow, there was something wrong here. Like, Saul's going out to kill Christians. He falls off, 
the animal then he's having a little discussion with God. Couldn't you just fried him? Couldn't have been better than that? That's it. You're gone. You're up. You're out of here. Look what you're doing to my people. Why doesn't God step in and do that? And I don't know about you, but I'm sure I've asked that question. And you've maybe asked that question too. When someone's been doing something to you that wasn't fair, wasn't just, wasn't right. Say, why God? Why don't you just zap them? Come on. Like, like I'm your servant. I've been faithful. Why don't you straighten this out? God say, no, I've got another plan. And so here we see, he fell to the ground, heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Well, at least God is making, addressing this troublemaker. But, you know, what about, what about the power of the Lord? It's an interesting thing. What about the power of the law? You know, in the Old Testament was the law. But when we move to the New Testament, after Christ, what was it called? The power of grace. And that's the problem that we face are facing right now. I listen to some writers and, 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 and speakers talk about how the Islamic people feel they need to get the ultimate law into our country, the Sharia law. If we have the Sharia law, then our country's going to be okay. Uh, it's an oppressive law. And, but the problem is it's a law. It's a law. We don't live under the law. We live under grace. You see, in the Old Testament, they lived under the law, and when, they, when the guy just stabbed him, we were told, don't touch it, and he touched it, and he's gone. In the New Testament, he doesn't do that. Have you seen anybody that's, uh, that God just gone, oh, you, uh, you're not talking nice about me, <laughs> you're gone. Doesn't happen. We're under the day of God's acceptance. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointing me to preach the gospel, and such, but the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the time, even though we don't live the way we ought to, God loves us just the way we are. Just where we are. He loves us. He's not there to judge. We ambassadors often have used judgment and tried to preach it down on people and condemn people. But that's not what God's talking about. That's not the message that, that he's giving. The message is love, forgiveness, hope. Love, forgiveness, hope. Not judgment. So here he is. He's talking to Saul. And he's going like, this isn't good, Saul, what you've been doing to me. Saul says, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Saul so asked. You know, he was really blind, blind by rage and rampant, rampage. Uh, when you're angry, uh, hostile, and, and full of rage and anger, it's really hard to see anything clearly. When we have anger welling up within us, it's really hard to see clearly what's happening. You, you, you just, I know it's right. I'll fix him. You know, like if I have to flatten his tires, I'll make sure he doesn't speed past my house. What's wrong with that one? So is flattening his tires, are we called to do that? Are we called to do that? I'll never, never forget my first pastor, the first Halloween, and they hired a bunch of us, the pastor from one church, myself, and some of those. They hired us to, to patrol the town in Gilbert Plains, Manitoba. And uh, back in those days, that was 74, kids did nasty things. Before that, when I grew up in the cusp, they did even worse. They didn't play with firecrackers there because it was a logging town. They used dynamite, burned all cars, and... and uh, like, like, it was pretty wild in those days. I, I look around and see what we, what happens here on Halloween in, in Bend. They go like, whoa, every Halloween I'm going, not even a marked window on Main Street. I mean, they, they must have made us worse in those days. I mean, everything got colored and whatever, blocked. With, they did roadblocks and everything. Anyway, so the government plans, they were fearful of this in the farm community. So they hired us to go out. And uh, so we did. And it was real quiet. We got paid 50 bucks or something for the night and drove around feeling like we were real important. And uh, anyways, after two nights later, um, came out and all my four tires were flat. And uh, I thought, oh, okay, okay. I guess it's fair game. They only let the air out. They didn't wreck the tires. It was a nuisance to have to get air and fill those tires. But my other pastor friend was furious. He was livid. And, and he just, and I just thought, hey, fair game. We killed their fun. They just killed our fun. And he was livid. And he went and he wrote in the Gilbert Plains Maple Leaf, a one-page paper that they still typeset with those each little lead letter. It was quite a paper. You know, I had to put every little lead letter in there to the Gilbert Plains Maple Leaf. And he wrote in there, the, the idiots and imbeciles in this town that can't add two plus two and how terrible it was that what they had done and, uh, and and he just did a slam at them because they let his air out too. 
Oh, well, that was the way to do it. Then, then later, later, there was a letter from the same minister that was upset about, it was over that incident, okay, because uh, I was talking in the coffee shop, and you know me, I'm always silent and never say anything. <laughs> and I was in the coffee shop, and, and they were talking about, because that was the talk of the town. Here's this nasty letter attacking all the kids in our town because they're idiots and imbeciles and can't add two bus two, and, and because they've got us. And I just said, I don't think it's a big deal. I said, we, we got paid, and it was, you know, I said it was, um, it was just, you know, they're pretty smart of them. They waited two nights. They didn't do it the next night. And uh, I learned, I learned a lesson. Anyways, then I got an anonymous letter that said, if you have something to say about somebody, you should say it to their face. An anonymous letter. Figure that one. <laughs> I thought, okay, okay, yeah, right, uh, like you practice what you preach, <laughs> you know, come and talk to me if you're upset, don't write an anonymous letter to say, say it to their face. Anyways, we made it through there. But you see, we're in that situation where when we get upset, we don't do wise things. And so blinding his, his rampage, uh, Saul's out there saying, I'm going to get those Christians, that they, they're... They're not following the law. They're not following all the legal stuff. They're not washing their hands right. They're not doing all these things. And uh, Jesus, he said, who are you, Lord? And Saul asked in verse 5, the second half, it says, I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Well, remember talking about obeying? Get up and go into the city. He, I mean, if I was him, I'd be happy to be alive. <laughs> If I was him, you know, the God of heaven just knocked me off and he missed, so he only just knocked me off, he didn't do me in. And I'd be, so it said, the gang was about to be busted. The gang was about to be busted. You see, there's always a gang around people that are doing bad. There's always a gang, the bullies, there's always a gang around people that are, that are not, uh, you know, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. People just hang in there and hang in with the gang. And it says in verse 7, the men traveling with Saul, the gang, were speechless. They heard the sound, but didn't see anything. Anyway, Paul couldn't see because he's blind. They could see, but they could hear, but they couldn't see anything. And they go like, oh, 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 oh. We are in deep yogurt. In Hawaii, they call it kimchi. We're in kimchi. Uh, we're in deep yogurt. We're in trouble now. We were, all we were doing was just going to Percy of Christians. And what he said? We're fighting him? We thought we were serving God. We were fighting him. Verse 8 said, Saul got up from the ground. When he opened his eyes, he could not see. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. Remember he was going there to hurt people? Now he's going in there hurting. Verse 9, and for three days he was blind and not, did not eat or drink anything. I'll tell you, boy, I'll talk about a fast. He was, he was saying, I need to get to the bottom of this. Sometimes in life we'll go through things where we need to take that time. Take some time to get to the bottom of it. In Damascus, and this is the interesting part, verse 10, in Damascus, there was a disciple. He was going to find disciples so he could take them back and put them in prison in Jerusalem. A disciple named Ananias. And the Lord called him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for the man from Tarshish named Saul, for he is praying. So what was he doing in those three days? He was praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. But God, what do you want me to do? God, you got to be kidding. I like him when he's blind. He was coming to get me. I feel safer when he's blind. I think God, are you sure that's right? Is that you, Lord? It's like, uh, it's like Bill Cosby did in the, the, his sketch on, on, on Noah. And he goes... Um, Noah's going zoop, zoop, zoop. Remember it from many years ago? Like, bing! Hi, this is God. Oh, hi, God. What, what, what do you want? He says, build me an ark. Make it this length and that length, that width, that height. And take every one of the animals and two by two put them in the ark. So there he is. He's got them in there. And he's going, um, got them all in the ark. He's worked for 100 years. He's done, built the ark. He's got the animals in there. Everybody thinks he's crazy. Nobody will believe him. Nobody trusts what he has to say. He's in the ark, and he's going like, okay, God. Noah, what? Okay, God. I got a problem. I'm in the ark. Nothing's happening. And he said, you know the mess those animals are making in the bottom of the ark? You know, like we never, what are you talking about water? We've never, they've never had rain. 
And he's going, uh, Noah, he says, yeah. And Noah's complaining, and then all he says, all of a sudden, he said, I just want, that's all, and I'm done, I'm out of here. You can have your animals, I'm finished. And then all of a sudden, boom, crash. And then, trickle, trickle, the rain starts coming down. Says, Noah says, what's that? It's rain. <coughs> oh, really? Oh, look, it's rising. Uh, it's you and me, God. It's you and me, God. <laughs> just you and me. You see, we get in that situation going, oh, no, no, God, you don't understand this. And that's what the, the, was Ananias has said. Lord, this is what he said, verse 13. Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he's come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name, which he is one of them. But Lord, the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Wow. Go, he said. Remember I said when he tells you to go, you need to go. And it won't be something that you might want to do. You go and you go. You don't, I mean, if it was up to me, I would have left him blind for the rest of his life. As long as he's blind, he's not going to find me. I don't know if you saw my cartoon I put on Facebook this week, this week about for the American Thanksgiving. And it's a blind, um, the blind farmer out there looking for the turkeys. And the turkeys are all going, moo, moo, moo. <laughs> They're not about, he's got a hatch in one hand, he's looking for the turkey, he's going, moo! Uh, you see, we don't want to walk into that situation, but Ananias said, then Ananias went to the house, entered in, placed his hands on Saul, and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, like, something like scales fell off Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up, he was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Wow. Busted by blessing. The gang got busted by blessing. We busted with more than blessing. And I don't know if you've ever been at a point where you wanted to just have it out with someone. Um, there's times, I don't mean, know, times in my life, you know, you just want to go straight things out. And the Lord said, bless those who persecute you. Be kind to those who abuse you. Speak kindness to those. Who, and if, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. And in doing so, you've done God's work. We're at a time when, I, when, we, when we need to bless people with blessing. We need to open our eyes to what God is doing. And it means, uh, it, whatever it means to you today, it, it may mean something different to every one of you. But, or you might be thinking, I don't know what it means to me. Well, they might have an opportunity soon to find out. But what it's saying is that it won't always be the way we think it should be. It may, it may not be people that we like. Uh, they certainly didn't like Saul with what he was doing, but Ananias was willing to obey, if we're willing to obey. So when the angel comes and says, go, the spirit says, go nearer, and then we are willing to reach out and bring that, okay, that help, that hand, that extend that, that, that forgiveness, whatever it might be. This is the day I believe we're going to see the hand of God move. And so I pray this morning that as we look at this and just see the story, um, it would be my, my, as I used to say, my brothers, to, um, to, to forgive Saul. I mean, he stood there and watched Stephen get stoned to the point where, where Jesus stood on the right hand of the Father to welcome Stephen home as a martyr, the first martyr um, in the faith. But, but uh, now God's saying, but I have a word for him. He's got a word for people that we don't. And, and, and I know people have really, really have a struggle with that because there are people that I wonder, how can he use them? And some people look at me and say, how can we use him? Um, you know, but let's, let's not judge one another. Let's not put each other down. Let's encourage one another. There's a scripture I, I, I read this morning, about 5.30 this morning, and it talks about if we love our brother and our sister, the love of God is in us. But if we don't love them, and not loving them is not wanting good for them, if we, don't, if we want them to fail, if we want people to, uh, we criticize, we put them down, if we're not loving them, it says, then we don't have the love of God in us. And I wonder how many people really need to test and see if the love is God, of God, where the, where the love of God is. It means that the enemy is still trying to hold on to us and making us want to go out and straighten things up. Making us want to solve the problems. When he clearly says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own strength, understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. But fear the Lord and depart from evil. How do we depart from evil? By blessing those who don't bless us. By being kind. 
by repaying good for evil, by uh, going this, the second mile, and, and you'll be tested. And you, I'm sure a lot of people were tested on Black Friday, um, as people wrestled and pushed and shoved and, and fought and bickered and whatever. Uh, but you'll be tested over this Christmas season, and you'll be tested now as we're going into a time when people are hurting. When our province, people are hurting. And people want to go out and they, they want to tackle the government. They want to tackle. Everybody wants to tackle somebody. Why not tackle the enemy in prayer? Why not saying, God, you're bigger than this. I come to you. You guide me. You lead me. You help me. And he will lead us through. Father, I pray this morning that you take this word that we share. And may we see the lesson. Lord, Saul wasn't a nice guy. But Lord, you busted the game with blessing. And Lord, you're going to help us to win in life by blessing others, being kind, loving, helping others, being there for them, walking with them, encouraging them, helping them when they're stuck in the ditch and when they're, uh, when, whenever it comes along, that they know that someone cares. Most of all, Lord, just letting people know that we care, being there because we care. You cared for us. You said, so freely have I given to you, now freely give to others. We ask your blessing to release us in this, to bless others now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You want to come, dear? All right, back there. Not sure. Okay, camera, we'll just do the camera, bro. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll just, we'll just stop there. I was going to say, uh, we'll come, let us adore him. For uh, he alone. But that's, we've shared it. Let's go ahead and have coffee now. And fellowship. And uh, if you can help on next um, Sunday morning, coming early, that would be a blessing. And um, if you can help on, um, on um, I put that in the bulletin. Also Tuesday evening, if you can come and, and we'll get the goodies together for the for our fellowship time. And please invite people. Take that one little flyer that's in the bulletin and use it to invite somebody. And you can see the pictures. Maybe they'll take the pictures into the gym as well. There is videos from last Sunday and the Sunday before at the back. And um, thank you for coming today, and may the Lord's blessing be upon you.